Um, you want to, and part of these are the skills that uh, you know Steve kind of has talked about before. You want to make sure that you are so comfortable with the device that you can navigate through the screens without fear. Okay, um, when you're using, and this is a great piece of software called Air Server. You want to be able to practice it not once or twice, but five times, ten times, twenty times until it becomes natural. You want to become so familiar with the device because it, it's a, truly a great thing to be able to have this mobility where you can walk around the classroom and stay in the back of the class and have anything you're projecting from back here. To me, is a, a great thing as a teacher. We're not wedded to that front desk and the computer. So to be able to teach from your iPad in the back of the classroom, to me, it, it, is a terrific thing. So part of that means, all right, I'm showing something on the screen, but now I want to close the app really quickly. And now I want to go back to an app that I was just using and, and slide through and say, okay, now we're going to go back to uh, Safari because there's a web page that I want to show you. And now I'm going to double tap on the home button again. It's going to show me all of the recent apps that I'm using, and they'll go back to my Google Drive. So there's a dexterity to that you want to become a good navigator. You want to know that when you press the home button once, that takes you always back to the home screen. But when you press the home button not once, but how many times? Twice. Twice. Twice that's going to take you to all of the recent apps. So all of this is just practice. You know, if you're one of the people right here who's saying, I'm struggling with the iPad, I'm struggling to do certain stuff, just practice the basic stuff that Steve taught you about the skills. That will kind of help you with your navigation of the screens so it's not scary, so it's not intimidating, but you can kind of nip it to where you have to go easily. Uh, so the next next piece of advice I'll give you, okay, uh, is to move on up to the iCloud, okay? Um, here's the reason why. Um, you know, let's say we have a folder here, and I mentioned Google Drive, we mentioned Dropbox, we mentioned Box.net. Here's why I would move everything to the cloud. Um, just you know, tell me, for example, where are places where you keep your documents that, for your students, uh, or for your class, for anything? Where do you traditionally keep them? Different drives. So Google Drive. Drives. Drives. What do you mean drives? Like, like, like hard drives. Hard drives. Documents. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What else? Dropbox. Anyone else? School ser maybe servers. Time to do. All right. Here's my advice. Um, move, think about moving that to the cloud. Think about moving the entire folders. I know it's a disconnect. People get scared when I say it. But I, I actually have my entire hard drive, and I moved every single folder in my hard drive into my Dropbox and Google Drive folders. And here's why. Because I love the fact that, again, when I'm trying to teach, and I'm thinking, oh, I need to show that PDF document. I need to pull something up. All I have to do is go to my Google Drive and go directly to the PDF. And now I have the PDF that I can show in my class. So if you take all of your content and go straight to Dropbox and just store it in there, and that's where you're saving things to. You know, when you're in Microsoft Word, you go file, save, you're saving it not to the documents folder, not to the server. Save it to Google Drive, save it to Dropbox, and that way all of your stuff is going to be in there, which means when you want to teach, everything can be accessible directly from here. Storage space, sure, it's a great question. Uh, Google Drive is going to be 30 gigabytes of space, especially if it's done, I think, through education, like through your school. Um, but I think 30 gigs is, is your number there. Dropbox, I think, is two by default, Steve, is that correct? It might have up to five. Yeah, they always change these things. I, I, I would say, to be honest, for majority of what you have in your hard drive, those numbers, whether it be five or 30, are sufficient. Um, if you have a uh, certain type of classroom where you have a lot of big file sizes, um, you can always increase it for a very small amount, whether it's something you do personally or through the school. Um, but for the most part, you should be fine. I haven't ever run into any issues with, with my own space. I don't worry. And you were saying before that usually we are scared to put our documents there. That means that until you collaborate them, you, you share them, nobody can see them. Right? Correct. Now the nice thing about things being, you know, there, I guess in Google Drive or Dropbox, is you can share them if you want to. But that's only if you want to. Just by default, it's only accessible to you through your own stuff. Yeah. Is there a way our school's moving to be like a Google Drive school? So I have one set up with my school email. Is there a way to integrate it? Because I've been using it kind of personally, or would I just sign in and then sign out? 
to kind of go between. You can do that, yeah. You can actually, you, know, you don't have to sign in and out. You can actually have two accounts open oh, okay. simultaneously. So on the top right, you can actually add an account okay. um, and, add, and have both accounts running. I've kind of uh, been more of a mindset where I just move everything to my school account okay. and, and you know uh, use that one as a basis one because that's where I can share people to and, and go through there. Okay. Um, so I try to do that. Yeah. Any other questions? Is yeah. it just personal preference between Dropbox and Google Drive? Um, can I say yes and no? Sure. Okay, yes and no. Um, yes, it's personal preference. Um, no, because occasionally you have situations where, uh, you know, where your old school, for example, is using Google Drive, and it just makes going between things much easier. You know, when you want to share it with colleagues in other departments or within your own department or somewhere else, um, to be able to share that stuff by not having to know their email address is a nicer thing. So as opposed to, uh, you know, having to know, all right, Betsy, what's your email address? Um, and type it into Dropbox. In Google Drive, I would just type in B-E-T-S and your name would show up when I share it. And that's the way that should work, in theory, all right?